I'm helping out a customer with his pick and place machine and this would be a good opportunity to show how the vacuum sensor, the vacuum pressure controller works. Here's the vacuum pressure controller and it has a relay that turns on and off a, a vacuum pump and it has the digital side power and we use a standard USB cable for this. Just plug it into the computer and you get 5 volts. And you need to expose the two wires are reserved for power, which is the black and red. And then we have a vacuum pump. And the customer has already done the wiring internally to the vacuum pump. You could actually just expose the wire in here and just take the, the, the black wire and then cut it and then wire it into these two terminals. But he's actually done something a little bit more organized and he opened this unit up and wired it through the internal wiring instead which is I think it's a much better way of doing this. And then we have the tank that holds the vacuum. The vacuum pump is going to be sucking out the air from this vacuum. The vacuum pressure controller will be turning the pump off when there is enough vacuum in the, the vacuum container, the, the tank. And there are two thresholds. There is a low and there is a high threshold and I'll get into that when I hook everything up. So I'm going to start with connecting the, the power wire for the digital electronics. The red goes closest to the LCD. And then the black. These wires and the strands are very delicate on these USB cables, so it's actually kind of challenging to, to remove the, the insulation. Okay, so those are on securely. Now I'm going to wire the, the pump. It doesn't matter which part of the wire you put through this, because it just acts as a switch. Just connecting these two terminals when it engages. To do a quick test, I'm just going to plug it in into the computer and I'm also going to power the, the vacuum pump and I'm going to suck air out of the, this particular nozzle here, which is the actual sensor for vacuum. Of course, I'm going to put a hose on this end. And I'm going to use this to as a straw and we'll see what happens. So the unit is plugged in. We can see that there is a some information here. There's a low and then there's a high. Six and nine and then the inches of mercury is zero at this moment because I'm not drawing out the, the air here creating a vacuum. I'm going to plug in the vacuum pump and I'll turn the vacuum pump on. And when I turn the vacuum pump on it'll automatically turn on because there is zero vacuum here. So it should turn on until I create a vacuum enough that it, it goes above the thresholds. So the unit functions normally. When it went above nine, the vacuum pump turned, on, turned off. And then when it went below the six, which is the low threshold, the vacuum pump turned back on so it can add more vacuum to the, to the tank. So let's connect all the, the hoses that's necessary. And what we need to do is we need to connect the vacuum pump to the vacuum tank. So it's drawing air out of the vacuum tank. And what we need to do is we need to have a check valve which is already connected here, a check valve in line. So when the vacuum pump is not on, and it, when it's off, there's no leakage of vacuum through the, the pump itself. This part right here will go to the actual machine. I think we're gonna have to cap this so we can test its function. And we can, what we can do is we can let it draw the vacuum out as it's capped. And then if we wanna see if the vacuum is working correctly, then we can uncap it and then just use our finger to, to release some of the vacuum. Check valve, 
a T connector here. This T connector is going to go to the vacuum pressure sensor, and this one's going to go straight to the tank. This may need a tighter seal. I think I'm going to have some leakage here. These are MPT fittings, which means that the thread actually gets um, wider as it goes this way, and it's narrower as it goes into the, the female section of it. And that just makes it tighter and tighter as you tighten it. This is going to have a much better seal because it's really hard to get on. Instead of using this one, I think I'm going to use something like this. This is a little bit larger so I can make a really tight seal. Okay. Now we should be able to get this one in here. Looks like it, looks like it may be too tight. I was actually able to get it on. I want to try to use this size hose because of the, uh, I want to have, his, have the, the hoses and um, fittings as tight as possible so there's no leakage. Okay, I think that's pr pretty good. I'm going to put this back in, back on the sensor. Okay. I'm going to turn it on. I'm going to go ahead and turn the pump on. And I, I capped it, but it's not a really good cap, so we'll see what happens. The, uh, hopefully there's enough vacuum pressure here to, to tighten this a little more, but we'll see. You can see it is climbing, so that's good. So now it's... I can hear some leakage somewhere so I'm going to I'm going to find out where that is Yeah the leakage is right here It it actually gives you an idea of how it works anyway It goes down to 7 6 when it passes below six, it should turn on again. And if you have the the high at a higher, that means that the vacuum pump will not have to turn on as much. But you want to make sure that your low is high enough that you have the vacuum that you need. So you have you need twenty inches of mercury for a vacuum for your application, then you'll want to have that as 20 minimum. And then you want to have much more than that uh, as long as it's not going above your maximum application. Uh, so that could be maybe 25 or something like that. And then it'll have to turn on at 20 and it turns off at 25. So it maintains a vacuum between 20 and 25. In this case, it's maintaining a vacuum between 6 and 9 inches of mercury. I'm going to demonstrate the adjustment of the high and low. You want to be careful not to touch anything else but the potentiometer or the trimmer that's on here, like I keep wanting to do. So I turned it to 19. So when it gets down to 6, it'll turn on again, and it won't turn off until it gets up to 19 so you'll have a much greater range of of vacuum but you're also allowing more range of vacuum in the tank but you're turning the the vacuum pump on and off less Okay, so it's past 19, so now it's going down to 18, and once and you'll see, you'll notice that through a much longer period, the vacuum pump will be off.
there you go. And that's how to connect and use the vacuum pressure controller. Thank you for watching.